So I've got this site here and uh, I have uploaded some content to it and I have created a search center and mapped my search box to it. And what I want to do now is display that content type property on, on these results here. We can see we have a line here. We have the title and description and a line here just before the URL that has some metadata about the document. And I'd like to add the content type here to the end of this metadata. Of course, you can put it where you want and I'll show you how that is done. But I'll show you specifically how to put the content type here at the end of this this uh, data. So, of course, this is done on the web part. We have to modify the XSLT of the search core results web part that is displaying the results. And that needs to be done on the results page. So we're on the results page. We just need to go to this web part and make the modifications. So we'll edit the page. We'll go down to the search core result web part. Over here on the right, there's a little arrow and we'll edit the web part. Now the page refreshes and our edit panel is on the top here. There are a lot of things we can do with the web part in this uh, panel and one of them is of course to dis about the display properties. What, I'm gonna, what am I going to display on this uh, results web part? The first thing we need to do is we see that this use local visualization checkbox is checked by default. And this is basically saying use your local uh, default uh, display XSLT. So we want to de-check this because we're going to put some custom code in here. The next place is under fetched properties. We want to be able to tell the search engine that this page wants to return these properties for us so that we can display them. And in order to do that, we need to put in an extra column here to uh, say, bring back that new property that I just uh, created. So I've got some code already written here, just so I don't have to retype it. And I'll just copy and paste it into here. Now, this needs to come bef after this opening columns tag and before the closing columns tag at the end. But otherwise, it can pretty much fit anywhere in here if you want to put the beginning or the end. So the column name here is C type, and you can see like the other ones, rank, work ID, they're all the same. They open and close in themselves, and they need to be fit in there between these open and closing columns tags. Now once that's there, we're going to fetch that property from the index so that in the data set so we can use it. But now we have to do something in order to display that property. So we'll go here to the XSLT. And you can see there's a bit of code here that is grabbing properties and displaying them and doing some logic to display them nicely. And we want to add two things in this one. Of course, there's a lot of other ways you could do this, but this is the way that I like to do it. Is first, I've got a little template here, which I will put in the bottom of the XSLT. It doesn't really matter where it goes, but we'll put it in the bottom here. And what it's going to do is it's going to say, um, check if the content type value has anything in it. We can say here, check the string to see if it's greater than zero. And if it does have a value in it, write out type and then the value of whatever's in that C type property that I have mapped and told to be displayed in this result set. But that's not enough. Now I need to have that value actually displayed somewhere in the XSLT. So I've got a call to that template here, which I will put up a little ways on that line, that metadata line that we talked about. So I just find where that is here. There's displaying the authors, displaying the date. Must be before hit highlighting. Here it is, search metadata one and search metadata two. So this is where I want to put it here in the search metadata two section. You can of course put it on a separate line if you want. You can use the make your own div class so you can do some special styling on it or however you like. But for me, I'm just going to put it at the end of that line. And the last value that I saw on the end of that line was size. So I'm going to just put it after this call, template call here. And there we go it added there. So now I'll save that and if I hit OK I should get back my result sets but now with the doc uh, the content type displayed. It's really that easy and if you want to use a different property, you don't want content type, you want your own property in there, all you really need to do is with this is just swap out C type with whatever your property name is going to be and uh, and add in those places. Now one other thing I want to show about this is what do I do, people often ask me what do I do if 
there's nothing coming back. Where's the problem? The problem is probably that you didn't do a full crawl and you don't have any properties to display there. That's why there's nothing there. Could be that there's something else is populating that property. But one good way, an easy way to actually check is to change that XSLT that you've got there to an XSLT that is going to show the raw data that I'm getting back from the search engine. So I'll just change this. And I'll edit the XSLT again. I'll actually grab my other code here. This is just the code I want. Just going to show that XSLT or the properties, and I'll put that in the XSLT here. And I'll save that. Now, I would recommend backing up the XSLT that you get in this window. Of course, you can always get it back by resetting your, your uh, search center. But if you've made a lot of modifications, you may not, don't want to do that. So save it on a notepad somewhere, and then you can always go revert to the original if you want. Now, I've hit OK when I actually get the result set. I should get a list of all of the properties that are um, being returned in the data set. And then I can go through and say, OK, well, is my property that I put in, and I put it in the beginning so it'll be at the top, does it actually return anything? And I can see here, yes, it does return something. So if I have a problem and it's not coming up, then there's got to be something wrong with my XSLT. If there isn't anything here, then I know there's something wrong with what's being populated in that property. So I'd also like to show you how we manage this displaying properties in Ontolica, because we have done some things with Ontolica to make it easier for people to do this kind of thing. So I've got my Ontolica search center here. I'll do the same uh, search. And I get back a bunch of uh, results. Of course, you can see that it's much richer results. But what I basically want to do, and I've actually already got it here, is to display this uh, content type on the Ontolica. So I'll just show you where that's done. Um, we have, instead of modifying the XSLT, which you can do in Ontolica, of course, it's completely open for people to, to expand on and, and modify and, and develop upon. Um, but we've tried to make it a lot easier for administrators to go in at any level on their site, either at the farm or a site collection or a site, and make modifications, uh, adding custom properties and things like that, that um, can then be propagated out against or be unique for different sites. So we've added a uh, administrative page, which is much easier to, to modify than going into the web parts and modifying the XSLT. And we call that the Ontolica Search Tabs page. There's a separate pa tab uh, for modifying the search on each one of the tabs. So you can have many tabs and have different settings for each one. So under here, I want to modify the search result properties. And then I can see I have this one here. I will just. I'll delete it so I can add it again for you. Um, if I want to have a new property displayed, I just click Add Property. This is really as easy as that. I give it a name. I'll call it Content Type. But I don't want to conflict with my other content type, so I'll just concatenate that. And then I want to choose which property it is that I want to map that property to to be displayed. And Ontolica has gone out and queried uh, SharePoint and got back all of the properties that are available. So all I have to do is really just find the one that I've mapped and put it here, decide which group to put it in. You can, of course, have different groups in the, uh, that are displayed in different places on your result page in Ontolica. You can really expand that a lot. And I can also choose an audience if I want to have a specific audience. So, for example, a good ex example would be, um, say, for example, in people search, uh, maybe you want the HR department to see the hire date of all of the employees, but you don't really want it wouldn't really be appropriate for the other employees to see that. So we can actually target that particular property being displayed to just one group. And uh, you can you can do that here if you're using audiences in in SharePoint. Of course, you can set them up easy enough in the user profile store. So once I've got that in, I just hit OK, and I get my property being displayed in the default. And when I go back to my search results, I will get then the property or the custom uh, content type displayed in the uh, metadata section of that page. So it's really that easy.
So that's really all I have to show today. Uh, thank you very much for attending the webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them to sales at surfray.com or to myself, rcp at surfray.com, and uh, I'll make sure they're answered. The code is available on our site, and it's, um, it should be a link right with this video when it's posted. Thanks very much.